So when are you having Trump on? I don't know. Okay. You, you, the look, I don't know. Maybe. Looks like you got something. Maybe. Okay, good. That's good. I think that's... Uh, I, look, at a certain point in time, it's just like... It would be interesting to hear his perspective on a lot of things. I would like to know what is it like when you actually get into office. I would like to know things like what what is it like versus perception. Yeah. What is it actually like when you get in that building? Like what 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 are you greeted with? When do you know that people are fucking with you? When do you know that the intelligence agency is lying to you? Like when you decided to fire Comey, what was the great question? I think we would all like to know that answer. What is it actually like? What actually goes on? What is actually said behind those closed doors that isn't said out in the public? What is shown to you that isn't shown out in public? What is it really like? Not what the books tell us and, you know, the movies and whatnot. What is it actually like? And, you know, Uncle Trump is the perfect guy to ask that question because everything that he can say, he will say. And even stuff that he can't say, right? Because I'm sure there's some stuff uh, that he isn't allowed to say or talk about, you know, super, I don't know, some alien is locked in the basement at the White House that they're examining or something, you know, like... So, so, some crazy, right, that, that he can't expose, but as close to it as he can possibly get, and even some stuff that he's probably not supposed to say, he'll probably say it. Just, hey, I, don't, I don't get crap. I'm, yeah. Yeah, such and such is going on. This is going on. So-and-so is actually the head of blah, blah, blah. It's not actually this person. This person actually runs it. You know, you know Uncle Trump is the perfect person to ask that question. So, hey, listen, I, I hope he goes on Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan asks these questions. You know that the intelligence agency is lying to you. Like, when you decided to fire Comey, what was the thought? How much did you know? Like, what, what's the machine like? What is, what is the deep state really like? Mm -hmm. Really like? Because we have all these, you know, smoky room perceptions, like from the Bill Hicks joke, where they show you the Kennedy assassination from an angle you've never seen before. You know, what is the machine that runs this country because it's very clear that it's not as simple as elected representatives that are doing the will of the people it's Facts. not yeah yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing you and trump together ah, you keep pushing that i i think okay i'll tell you from my perspective like uh on why you ought to consider it when you do do it i'll just give you my um, okay just so you know he and i don't speak you know it's not something that is like hey his camp saying go in there and do this and do that. Now, I've never interviewed the guy, so it's not like I'm, you know, uh, lobbying for it. But I think if, you know, when you think about sports or you think about fights, what is the boxing world if Frazier Ali never happens, right? Uh, what is the UFC world if DC John Jones doesn't happen or Khabib Connor doesn't happen? And they're both at their peak, and those fights don't happen. We can go on with sports, you know, with baseball, with, you know, uh, interviews of Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jackson. You know, you go look at, you know, uh, uh, some of these things that happen with Larry King or her and, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of different guys. He's a guy that's probably the most misunderstood by a side. And a guy that... Uh, How do you think he's misunderstood in what way? I, I, think, I think the media has really painted this guy to be evil. I had, you know, like, I like to talk to people I fully disagree with. And I, I think they're delusional in certain areas to understand, like, what makes you believe what you just said? Right. Like, I don't understand what you just said. Right. Tell me how you could be that convinced you're right. 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 I, Cenk was on the podcast yesterday. And... Jenk is convinced he's a better businessman than Trump. I mean, how could you say something? Like, but he's convinced. And he says, no, he's a loser. Trump's a loser. I said, dude, what do you mean he's a... There's only two things he's won in his life. I said, there's only two things he's won in his life? Yes. Yeah, there's only two things he's ever won in his life. And this is the second time Jenk and I have a, having a conversation together. Politically, we're on very different sides. I'm just trying to find out why do you think this way, right? And he says, yeah, only two things. He's a great marketer, and he did this. I said, first of all, 15 years you know, apprentice. 
Good luck. Go do. No, he had great producers. I don't care if you have the greatest producers in the world. You can hire any producers Joe has and go try to match Joe's numbers with podcasts. Yeah, because it's his producers. No, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. 15 years. Book, how many years does Art of the Deal does? Well, yeah, but Pat, imagine if you started with $430 million. You would have been richer than him today. I said, $430 million. What's this $430 million? He got $430 million. Are you like counting in today's money? Versus, well, you know, it's estimated this. Okay, he got a million. He got $14 million, No problem. He got family money. I'm willing to make the case that you are more likely to screw up your life if your family gives you money. He says, what do you mean? Yeah. I said, so I went and studied. I got four kids now. We're going, you know, we've done estate planning multiple times, but now I just sold the insurance company, so I have to sit there and see what am I going to be doing with some of this money that came out of nowhere? Goldman, Morgan, estate planning. Do we do this? Do we do that? Let's go study. We put our research team. Go find out who did it right out of all the families. Okay. The Medici family, seven generation, they kept the wealth within oh. the family. What are they doing? And boom, 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 boom. Great. Vanderbilt family, the money lasted one generation, maybe two. Like when, you know, Anderson Cooper's mom's like, look, we're Vanderbilts, but you ain't get nothing. You got to make your own money, right? Okay. You know, the Rockefeller family, they're at three or four, okay? We can go through all these families. Most of them that get a lot of money, the kid becomes a what? Drug addict, drug dealer, yeah. spoiled. They don't work. They're right. not this. They're not that. Right. Okay. So let's just say he did get the money and he still doesn't do drugs. And he doesn't do alcohol, and his vice is women, and he works his ass off in business, and he makes it where he makes it to. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to make the argument that actually if you do come with money, it's a harder life than a person that doesn't get money to have that drive and ambition. Not necessarily it's a harder life to have that right. fire, the ambition that, you know, right. you, got, you can't teach that. You either got right. it or you don't have it, right? Okay. So then we go into politics. So let me get this straight. This guy wins in New York. He becomes a billionaire. He wins on TV. He's won with women. He's partied with everybody. In 1988, he's doing an interview with Oprah Winfrey, and Oprah Winfrey says, hey, you sound like you're going to run for office. No, I have no interest, but if I ever did, I'd win. Okay. <laughs> then he runs. Everybody thinks it's just a marketing deal that he's doing. And then when he wins, I don't know if you remember when he walked down, he's like, even him and himself, they were kind of like surprised. Babe, we just, we just won. Right. And the day before, the odds were if you bet $100, you know, you'd you have to bet $350 to win $100 on Hillary. But if you bet $100, I think you win 550 with Trump or some number like that. The underdog won. The greatest underdog of all time of politics, right? Okay. Facts. <clears throat> so let's fast forward 20 years from now. Let's go to 2043. We're doing a podcast. You're 75. Okay. I don't know if you're doing podcasts, but that'd be one hell of a podcast at 75. <laughs> And maybe we feel a little bit more comfortable coming out at that time because we're traditionalists, we're older generation, then maybe we're a little bit more careful about what people think about us right now. But at 75, we look back and we look at the list of podcasters. Who are the greatest podcasters of all time? Joe, Joe Rogan at the top, GOAT. Who's the greatest this, 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 that? And he's like, dude, but he never interviewed that guy Trump. I'm going to be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, let me get this straight. The greatest podcaster of all time never interviewed Trump at a time that he didn't do that? Dude, that's crazy. I don't believe it. Why not? It had to be personal. It had to be this. So to me, I think the guy that's going to interview him in a way that nobody else is going to interview him, you. You're going to ask some questions that you want to know about. Like, you know, hey, what happened with JFK? Are we really going to find out? Can you commit to us? Are you going to come out with the files or no? So I really want to know. Last time you said you did, but you only gave us 80%. Are we going to get the other 20%? Aliens. What the hell is going on with these aliens? Are we going to know or no? Can you give us a glimpse? Do you think we should know? I Can don't think I... he'd tell you anything about but, that. But, but what I'm saying. I think that would be a waste of time. Yeah, but what I'm saying is whatever Maybe angles. I'm wrong. <laughs> Shout out to PBD, man. Shout out to Patrick Ben David. Good salesman, man. Good salesman. And, you know, my thing is. I understood why Joe Rogan didn't want to interview Uncle Trump before. Because I felt like he still kind of believed in Joe. Right? But now he's openly said now, if it's Joe and Trump, I am not voting for Joe. I'm voting for Trump. He's openly said that already. Maybe not those exact words, but something along those lines. 
He said that he would vote for Trump. So why wouldn't you interview Trump? Why would he? He's the biggest podcast on the planet. It's Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. When you think of podcasts, you think of Joe Rogan, right? So why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? And he knows everybody wants him to do it. He knows that. And, and, and as far as I've heard, I've, I've heard stories that the Trump team has reached out to Joe Rogan to do an interview. Multiple, as a matter of fact, I think Joe Rogan said it himself before that they reached out to him when, when he was still believing in Joe. Uh, and he said no. But now he said that he would actually vote for Trump. So I, I, I just don't understand why he still has this hesitancy to do it. I think, well, I could speculate. Somebody behind the scenes, possibly, you know, someone who's paying him, is telling him, no shot. No shot. We gave you free reign on, now this is just speculation. I don't have any hard evidence of this, so don't hit me with no misinformation, okay? This is just me speculating. Just my humble opinion. I don't have any evidence. But it's like, we gave you free reign on everything else. That one thing, no go. That's all we're stopping you from. Everything else is free, fair game. You can do whatever you want to, except that. That's what I, that's what I speculate is going on. Allegedly going on, of course. But what do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section. Let, let me know. Or do y'all think he's just playing around with us? toying with us he knows that everybody wants it so he's waiting until that perfect time to do it maybe post uh uh primary um once trump wins then he'll do it maybe, maybe that's the case he's waiting for that perfect moment because he knows it's gonna be the biggest podcast episode ever 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 the biggest podcast you 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 think of the biggest podcast you know, episode ever, it's going to be twice as big as that. It's going to be massive. So maybe he's just waiting for that perfect moment, right? Because right now isn't the greatest moment in time. I mean, yes, we have the, the uh, you know, the indictments and whatnot, but uh, next year, I feel like closer to the primary or after the, immediately after the primary or immediately after the trials or whatever, would be a better time. Y'all let me know. What do y'all think? Talk to me. I can't tell you anything about but, that. But, but what I'm saying. I think that would be a waste of time. Yeah, but what I'm saying is whatever Maybe angles. I'm wrong. Whatever angles you choose to take. Right. Okay. It's your show. You, you get to take whatever angles you want to take. I think it'd be very weird to look back. There's going to be no mainstream media 20 years from now. You know that. I know that. To look back and say Joe never interviewed Trump. That's kind of weird. So that's my pitch to you. Good. I like Wait. weird. You like weird? I like things that are weird. I don't know about that. I think, I think, you know, uh, I think one. Um, why don't you interview him? Why don't I interview him? I think if I give you my um, assessment on why. Have you ever tried? I I'll give you my assessment on why I think. Okay. I think if he's him, okay, you're here, Joe. Everybody else is below you. In this space, not mainstream. In mainstream, he'll do Tucker, he'll do, you know, uh, Megyn Kelly, whatever. I don't know if he's done Megyn Kelly. He hasn't done it yet, but he'll do Tucker, he'll do Brett Baer, he'll do Hannity, he'll do all that stuff. But in this lane we're in, you have to do you first. Then comes everybody else. He can't do that. So I think we come well, he's after done, you. Uh, he, he's done a podcast with... Uh... I forgot the group of individuals, but one of them actually got in trouble. Like he literally can't be on camera on YouTube anymore. Ah, crap. Why am I drawing a blank on their name? There's a group of guys and one of them is literally banned on YouTube. Banned. I remember watching it because they were interviewing him and um, he asked them a question and it was a really great question and I'll get to the question. But he was like, I can't be on camera, you know, because this the video will get taken down. Like, they literally 
can't have this guy on camera. He used to be a big YouTuber. I think he's on Rumble now. But um, he asked a really a really great question. He said, um, you know, with all of the money that you have, the connections that you have, why don't you just F off and go buy a private island or something? He didn't say these exact words, but like, why don't you just F off, buy a private island, and just sell off into the sunset, like, and not deal with any of this crap? Because if you, if you did that, they would stop messing with you. And Trump said, you know, that's a great question. And he said, because I believe in America and I want to make America great again. Because it is true in my estimation. And I'm assuming in a lot of yours. If Trump just said, you know what? I give up. I give up. I'm going to go sell off into the sunset. I'm not going to run for president. I'm not going to run for any office. I'm not going to talk to anybody else. I, I, I'm just done. I, I just want to I be left alone. I think if he said that, all of this stuff would somehow magically just disappear. Would fade off into the sunset. Literally. <laughs> With him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and for him to still be standing in the fire. Saying, nah. I ain't giving up. And I, I've heard that, allegedly, allegedly, I've heard that he said that I'm willing to die. I'm prepared to die for this. Allegedly, I've heard that, that Trump said, I'm willing to die behind this. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that statement along with him still fighting, standing in the fire, willingly stand, standing in the fire. And we all know he could just disappear. I mean, the guy's a billionaire. He knows everybody. He knew everybody before he was president. Then he became president. Then he really, really knew everybody and knew people internationally. So he definitely could just disappear if he wanted to. And the fact that he doesn't really says a lot to me. It says a lot, and it gives me a whole lot of confidence. That's part of where my confidence comes from, where I say, yeah, he's definitely going to win again. Because why? one reason, why would he be standing in the fire willingly? If he knew and really felt he was going to lose, just disappear. Say, I give up. Scream uncle, right? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm making jokes here, but I'm also being serious, you know? Uh, because they would leave him alone. I know I'm going to lose anyway. Why am I fighting? Just disappear. I'm good. I'm set. My family is set. My family's family is set. There's nothing more, right? So that's where I'm at with it. But y'all can let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. Do you guys feel kind of the same way in uh, your support of Uncle Trump? Like you're, you're watching him and you're like, man, he's still standing in the fire. That gives me a whole lot of confidence. That, that gives me even more confidence to support him. Y'all let me know, because that's how I'm feeling. Talk to me, though. Everybody else, he can't do that. So I think we come after you come. If I'm his advisor, if I'm his advisor, I would advise him. You can't go to anybody else unless you go to Joe first. And, I, and I'm telling you for like from a perspective of if I'm his counsel, I would say you go to Joe, then you go X, Y, Z. Everybody else is X, Y, Z, Joe. You're Joe. Everyone else is XYZ, okay? Um, and, and I think he knows that, and I think the person in control right now is not him. It's you. Like, the person in control with Hunter is Hunter's camp, not you. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, the, you know, the Hunter, no, Joe. They get to, whoever gets to say no, they're in control. Right. So, but from your perspective, what's going on in America today I would say if you don't do the podcast with him, you're helping the establishment and you're helping a guy named Joseph Biden. Facts. I think you're helping that person. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Mm. But indirectly in your mind, you're helping Joseph Biden win by not interviewing did Trump. You, did you come on this podcast specifically to no. try to get me to interview Trump? No. You brought up Trump multiple times. See, I never brought it up. It seems like you did. You, I, I, Uh, PBD is definitely right. If he doesn't interview Trump, then he's definitely helping Joe win. Now, I still don't believe Joe would win, but I'll take every small W that I can get. And that's definitely a W if Trump is on the Joe Rogan podcast. That's definitely a W. 
one hundred percent. And I think I think Uncle Trump should just do a, a, a run of interviews. Joe Rogan, PBD, right? Uh, go back to uh, 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 the group of guys. I can't think of their name anymore. Um, and then, of course, other uh, podcasts, you know, and also other mainstream media. Go back on Hannity, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Hannity. Go on, go, go on with Tucker. Go on with all of these folks. I think that only helps him because, you know, Joe's not going to. We know Joe is it. I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't even know how Joe gets on a debate stage. I, I have a, I, I, I just genuinely don't know how that's going to happen. Can you imagine Joe Biden on a debate stage with Uncle Trump in 2024? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That is going to get ugly. And I ain't talking about for Trump, for Joe. So I'm sure they're going to come up with some type of excuse, you know, something. Something to, to, to make sure that Joe ha doesn't have to stand on that stage across from Uncle Trump and debate him. <laughs> oh, man, that is going to get ugly. Ugly. Sheesh Louise. <laughs> what do you, how, how do y'all think they're going to skirt around that one? Or do you think he just go let him get up there? I doubt that's going to happen. I just, I, I don't see it happening. What, 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 what excuse do you think they're going to come up with to, to, to keep Joe off of that debate stage? Let me know in the comment section. I'm really curious what y'all got, man, because, whoo, that would be bad. Very, very, unless they, you know, I've heard some stories on, uh, you know, what they do to Joe from time to time to prop him up a little bit, you know, to perk him up, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know, I'm just saying, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying too much, but you know, uh, I've heard some stories. I've heard some stories. How true they are, I don't know. <laughs> if you know what I mean, <laughs> to make make sure he's very alert. I guess that does that to you, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's probably it's probably false. You know, they probably have some type of medicine or something. You know that they give to him. But uh, when I heard that, it was quite funny. But as always, thanks for uh, tuning in. Y'all stay safe out there. Peace and love. I'm out.